Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Brandon here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Danielle, and she's selling her two-site package of display advertising, affiliate, and Amazon Associates businesses on the Empire Flippers marketplace. So welcome to the show, Danielle, and how are you doing today? Thanks, Brandon. I am doing great today. How about yourself? I'm doing good as well. It's a gloomy day here in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, but you know, the sun comes out every once in a while. That's all I could ask. (laughs) Yeah. And where is it that you're calling from, Daniel? I'm calling from San Diego. So as usual, it is sunny here. Yeah. You have no worry about sunny there. That's for sure. (laughs) It stays that way. (laughs) Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I'm really excited to have you on the call today and to talk to you about this business and what you've created over the years. But before we dive into the interview, why don't we give a general overview? So it is a two-site package of display advertising, affiliate, and Amazon Associates businesses in the finance niche created in July 2016. The average monthly revenue for the business is $3,413 per month and makes an average of $3,250 per month in net profit. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 55390 to learn more about the business, or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So now that I've given a general overview of the business, what's included in the sale is two domains and all of the site's contents and files, one additional domain, which is currently not monetized, an email list with over 1,451 subscribers stored in convert kit, social media accounts for Facebook and Pinterest, and three ebooks. So Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Well, I actually started building online businesses back in 2015. I own several online businesses now. These are just the ones that I'm looking to sell currently. So these particular businesses I actually purchased last year. I didn't start these from scratch. I purchased them last year. One is in the personal finance niche. Much of the content in that one is just related to, you know, personal finance topics like tips and tricks on how to reduce debt and information along those lines. One of the websites is more finance related. That is the one that's not monetized. There's a lot of finance topics related to stocks and investing and such. And then the third is a blog that is focused on teaching you how to make extra money specifically related to side hustles. So I've taken that last year, I purchased these blogs last year and basically have been adding as much content as possible to grow the income month over month to where it is today. Oh, amazing story. And it's really awesome that you found these niches and you were able to grow them as rapidly as you did as well, too. It's really awesome. Now, what would you say is the biggest driver in terms of revenue for these businesses? Would you say that display advertising or maybe the affiliate revenue is driving more than the Amazon Associates revenue for these businesses? The biggest driver is going to be the display advertising. That is probably around 60 to 70% of the income in total. The next biggest driver is going to be affiliate income. The Amazon Associates is actually a small portion of the income. Most of it is individual affiliate programs that I belong to. Okay, that's really awesome. Now, why go into the finance niche when you were looking to acquire these businesses? Was there something that stood out to you you already had some experience in? Or was there something else that really drew you into this niche in particular? I absolutely love personal finance. I am a huge personal finance nerd. I'm an accountant in my day job. You know, something that I have been doing since 2015 when I started my first online business, which by the way is not in personal finance. It's a passion project business. The reason I did start that business is actually personal finance related into trying to get myself towards that financial freedom number that a lot of people are looking for. And that's what got me started with my interest in personal finance. So over the years, you know, I just became more and more interested in more and more reading about it. And when these sites came up on the marketplace, I kind of jumped at the chance to maybe take some of that information that I've learned over the years and use it to write some good content for these blogs. 
Wow, it's really amazing. And it's awesome that you saw that opportunity and you were able to jump on the opportunity at the time when it presented itself. And if the business is doing so great at this time, Danielle, why is it that you've decided that you would like to sell it? So I have become involved with a lot of different businesses at this time. So like I said, I still have my passion business that I run. I don't have any plans to sell that business. I'm looking to grow that one a little bit more. I also have recently bought a couple franchises, which are a little more hands-on. So basically, it's just time-related. I just don't have the time to put into these businesses like I used to. So at this point in time, I'm just ready to move on to, I guess, some new experiences. Yeah, and that's completely understandable. A lot of people, they kind of run the business to the point where they feel like they've optimized it to the best of their ability. And then they want to see that baton get passed on to the next owner and for them to take it on to you know new heights. So that's really awesome to see that you kind of fall in that. Yes, I do see a lot of opportunity for growth with all the sites. And I just personally don't have the time to put into all of the ideas, I guess. So I'm not able to give it as much time as I would like to. I also work a full-time job, so it's just not there. And given the movement in my priorities, you know, it's just time. And I'm pretty sure somebody else can take these sites and really run with them. Absolutely. And we'll dive a little bit deeper later on in the call into you know some of the growth levers that you would pull to push this business. But first, I'd like to know, was there anything that you learned while growing these businesses that you plan on applying to your current projects or maybe future projects down the road? Time management is a huge one, obviously. And whenever you're trying to run multiple businesses at a time, you know, I've learned a lot of time management skills along the way. But You know, in regards to these specific businesses, I've actually learned a lot of, I don't want to say a lot of technical information, but I've learned a lot more about site speed and how to optimize your site to get, I guess, better RPMs. Like if you're familiar with how the on-page advertising works, if you're able to optimize your pages so it shows more ads, but not so many ads that people are put off by it. Those were some of the biggest things I learned along the way while trying to optimize these particular blogs. And that's been a good driver to increased revenue as well. Yeah, really great experience to have that firsthand. Was there anything that you tried with these businesses and it just didn't give you the ROI that you were expecting? I tried to join several additional I think when I first took these blogs over, I was a little, I guess, antsy to get more affiliate programs on the books and start growing those. And it didn't quite have the ROI I expected only because I didn't spend as much time as I would have needed to, to kind of cultivate the content around those particular affiliates. So I think I dropped the ball on that a little bit. It's definitely something that can be done, but it would take a little more time. So the affiliates on there now are solid affiliates with a lot of content written around them. So I just didn't have a good strategy at the beginning. Once I understood how the affiliate income worked a little bit better, it was easier for me to take that and just optimize content and revenue streams around those particular affiliates instead of trying to join 5,000 different affiliate programs and just like randomly adding links wherever I could. That didn't work. That's really interesting to hear because it's something that we hear about often. Like, sure, you can add as many affiliate networks as you'd like, but really is your content already geared and set up to get that conversion for that particular product? And I guess that's something that you learned also in the process is, you know, making sure you have that strategy in place. So I'm sure someone that has already some knowledge or a core skill set in building out that affiliate based content, I think that would be a great opportunity for them as well. Now, where would you say that a majority of your traffic is coming from to these sites? Is most of it coming through organic search or do you have other sources? Right now, probably about 60% of it is coming from Pinterest and the remaining 40% is Google search. Got it. And then are you doing anything else in terms of marketing in terms with like your social media accounts or maybe the email list and like a newsletter, promotional content, things of that nature? I do a weekly newsletter and I have, like you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, I have a few products. And I do have a sales funnel related to those products. So that does bring in some additional income. It's not a huge traffic source, but it's more of a direct sales, you know, income opportunity. As far as Facebook and Instagram, I do have Facebook accounts. Like you said, I don't do a lot on them just due to time limitations. That's another area that, you know, you could possibly 
I guess, expand into those areas. I don't do social media as much as I focus on SEO only because social media changes so often. And I prefer to focus on, you know, Google search traffic. And, you know, I've had a lot of good luck with Pinterest as well, even with their new algorithm changes, all the changes they're making, you know, I still have some pretty good experience with that. That's great. You're pretty much leading into my next question. And that's kind of talking about the daily, weekly functions of the business. So why don't you walk us through what are your typical tasks? Or what does your workload look like on a weekly basis? And what it is that you're doing on the business now? So on a weekly basis, I'm probably spending between five and 10 hours. And most of that time is actually just spent creating new content. I do have somebody that creates pins for me for Pinterest just because I'm not artistic. So they create all of that for me. She sends the pins over to me. I do schedule those pins out every week. So I do that, make the content. Whenever a new post goes live, I do schedule it out on Facebook. But, you know, that only takes five minutes max for each post that goes out. Like I said, a majority of my time spent is content creation. And I think that's where the time should be spent. Mm. So you're writing all of the content yourself, or do you also have maybe some writers or freelance writers that you're also outsourcing content to? So in the past, I had writers only due to the limited amount of time we have. But I actually, back in July, got rid of all those writers. So I'm doing it all myself now. Just because the changes that I had in my life, I decided to start writing myself to, I guess, bring in additional income. Yeah, that makes total sense. So do you think that there's any particular skill set that a buyer should have prior to acquiring this business? Or could most of the workload and the operations that you're performing now be learned during the transition period? So a lot of the functions that I do now can be learned during the transition period. Although It will be helpful for a buyer to have a background in SEO or at least have a high level understanding of how SEO works and how to do SEO research. As far as writing, anybody who is decent at writing can write a blog post. Writing is not hard in itself. But if you want to create SEO optimized content, which I would recommend to increase your Google search rankings, you would want to understand how to write for SEO. Yeah, absolutely. It's, you know, kind of the staple of the business as well, too. A lot of organic search traffic and also with Pinterest, but already having that outsourced help. So yeah, really honing in on the skill of uh, SEO content is really going to what drives the business as well, too. So that's really great mention. Hypothetically speaking, if you were to keep this business, what are some of the ways that you would personally try and grow it? Honestly, I would keep generating more and more content. That's been the biggest way that I've been able to grow, make additional income, I guess, grow the traffic is Additional content, especially on the personal finance site, there's a lot of opportunity to create some additional products, especially related to personal finance and getting related to like budgeting and, you know, pretty much creating products that can help people better track their own finances. So there's a lot of opportunity for all different types of products in that area. There's also opportunity to branch out and maybe do some like one-on-one. I don't know if I want to call it consulting. You'd obviously want to, you know, talk to your lawyer and figure out what you're allowed to coach on and what you're not allowed to coach on. But there's definitely some opportunities out there for some financial coaching, you know, anything like that. You can create groups, especially on Facebook. There's opportunities to create you know, Facebook groups where you can have people come in and just talk about personal finance topics. There's a lot of opportunity for growth areas that I just don't have time to get into right now. But if I were to keep this site and make this a little bit more of a priority, I would most certainly start moving into those areas. Yeah, it's really great. And it's awesome that you ultimately have that roadmap established for the new buyer and they could ultimately come in and optimize some of those features that you had mentioned. Now on the flip side of that, Danielle, so what do you feel are maybe some of the potential risks associated with this business that a buyer should be aware of? Risk associated with any online business, especially this one here, since it is heavily, a lot of the traffic is from Pinterest. You know, if Pinterest changes their algorithm again, if they change, you know, the way they're showing search results that could have an impact on your traffic. Same goes with Google. If there's a big Google algorithm shift and it, you know, moves towards something else important, you know, that can always impact your traffic as well. The way Google, in my personal opinion, right now, the way Google search is, you know, all the content on my site, 
at least the newer content that I've created on my site is created with the user first. So there's no keyword stuffing. There's none of that. It's all completely just user optimized. What I believe would be the best information for the user. And I think that's what Google looks for. So I don't necessarily foresee any hits by the Google algorithm. But again, with an online business, you never know. Yeah, we never really know what Google decides they'd like to do in their new updates. Yeah. So yeah, I completely agree <laughs> with you on that. And that's pretty common across the board for most content sites in general when it comes to any search algorithm feeding your content to the user. So yeah, I completely understand that. So are you willing to commit to a non-compete, meaning once the transaction has been completed with this business, you'll stay out of this specific niche for the required time? Yes, okay. definitely. Perfect. And then how much support are you willing to offer potential buyers? Are you going with the typical 30 days of email and Skype call support? Or did you have something in addition that you would like to add on to that? I am completely open to the full 30 days email and Skype support. Anything additional above that I would be open to talking about, having a discussion about, depending on what the specific buyer needed. But I would certainly be open to a discussion on that. Okay, perfect. And I'm sure our potential buyers and listeners out there can also see the value in that support that you're wanting to see the business continue on and do good. So that's really great. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So are you open to negotiating something like an earnout where you'll receive a large portion of the sales price up front and then smaller payments closing out the deal shortly after that? Yes, I would be open to that. Perfect. Now, just a few more sideline questions for you, Danielle, wrapping up the call. What advice would you give to our listeners that you wish you knew when you first started this business or started into this business? I'm sorry, since you acquired it. Oh, that's a hard question. So I guess my biggest piece of advice would be to be a little bit patient. Content takes a while to catch on and pinches both. And I know when I first started, I wanted to see immediate results with some of the new changes I was making. And it did. It took a few months to start seeing some positive results with the changes that I was making. So, I mean, that would be one of my biggest areas would be just to be patient. And with any online business, you know, like I said, I have other ones and it's the same with those. It's sometimes slow going and it's easy to get discouraged, but you don't have to be. Yeah, I hear you. It's definitely not a sprint when it comes to ranking content and competing with Google's algorithm, I guess. It's It's definitely the long game. Yeah. Yeah. Was there any software tools or maybe resources that helped you in your business life? You know, honestly, I'm an Excel spreadsheet user. So everything I do is documented in Excel spreadsheets. Like I keep to-do lists and the spreadsheets and everything like that. Um, As far as any other software, you know, I have the typical WordPress plugins that, you know, the sites are both pretty light in plugins. I try not to use a lot just to keep the site speed fast. So I don't really use a lot of extraneous software, I suppose. Okay, that's actually a good thing. So it's it's always good to hear that. (laughs) That's awesome. Now, just final question for you, Daniel, wrapping up the call. So putting yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why do you think that your business is worth buying? So the benefit of my business, I think you can buy a currently profitable online business. So I've bought businesses in the past that were not profitable yet. And it's hard. (laughs) It's hard to start from scratch. It's hard to buy something that is not yet making a profit. To be able to come in and buy something that's already making you a profit gives you the freedom to, I guess, breathe a little bit. And it's also a business where there's still a lot of opportunity to increase earnings as well. So not only do you get to come in and have some cash coming in every month, it's not a completely like decked out business that's got everything dialed in. There's still some opportunity for improvement. So you could easily take that income you're already making and parlay it, especially if you wanted to reinvest those earnings back into the business completely, you know, parlay it into a much larger revenue producing two sites, I guess. Yeah, no, that's a really great opportunity. And, you know, just looking at this business as well, seeing all of the foundation that you've already established for the business buyer to take and ultimately scale even further is a really great opportunity for them. And yeah, we really appreciate you jumping on the call and kind of explaining a little bit about your history and your experience with these businesses. And I'm sure we'll be seeing this listing getting sold for you here in the near future. All right. Wonderful. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate you having me on the call. Yeah, thanks again for jumping on. And we'll definitely be talking to you here pretty soon and hoping to see this listing getting sold in the near future. Okay, great. Thank you.
All right, thanks. And all right, everyone, thanks for listening. To learn more and to see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 55390. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey. 